Welcome back. Our guest tonight is a multi-platinum selling recording artist and the 2008 Teen Choice Hottie Award winner. It's the fabulous Joe Jonas is here. How are you, Joe? Hey, good. You know, I never really got that Teen Choice surfboard that says you're the hottie of the year. So I'm... I it never came. I did get... I, I have one that I got in 2019 with my brothers. I could show you if you'd but like. But that's not a hottie award, is it? This is no hottie award. No, that's just that's your regular teen choice, but it's, it's just, this is just uh, some something I got for the brothers. But the real one I want is the hottie award, obviously. Can I can I tell you something? And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to get to the bottom of this, and I'm going to make sure you get that hottie award. I I'm just curious. Is it a different like color? Is it gold? That's what I'm saying. Have a six pack. It should be gold, and it should be waxed and ready to surf on. That's what I think. Fun. Now, how are you? How are you doing? I'm great. Are you I'm good? Doing wonderful. Yeah, just been in a new house, moved in right before the quarantine, so we're able to just hang out and you know make a house a home. Well, and what sort of stuff are you doing to make a house a home? Plenty of Legos. Wow. During this time, um, we we have made. Let's see. And, and to I can't to be fair, Sophie's really the the talented one when it comes to Legos. Um, I help by assorting the different pieces. Ah. So we've done uh, three Lord of the Rings Legos. We've done Hogwarts, the castle, which is like 7,000 pieces. The Batmobile um, and and Stranger Things. So I mean, you guys are running out of options at this point. But to, haven't you, is this right? You've been watching. Didn't you have an agreement when you got married regarding Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter? Yeah. So tell me about well, that. Sophie, she told me, she said, look, if we're going to get married, and it was actually, if you're going to date me, wow. you have to watch the Harry Potters. Because every Christmas, for those of you that are watching that don't know, every Christmas in the UK, they just stream and play Harry Potters, all of them, <laughs> right? So I watched them all. I fell in love with it. And I was like, look, well, my role is that you have to watch Lord of the Rings. So we've been binge watching Lord of the Rings during this time and building the Legos that go with the movies, which is wow. quite fun. But you've, is this true? Someone told me you've been learning Italian. I've been trying to learn Italian and I've been doing it on the Duolingo app for a while. And I thought I was really slick, you know, like I would have a couple phrases up my sleeve. And sure. when we went to the Amalfi Coast last year, like I ordered a couple pasta dishes and I, th I thought I was cool as hell. And then I started up with a tutor recently. So um, she's incredible. She's a professor at Penn State. And I had two options to go with the business side of things, where it was the business tutor or the I want the vino and I want all the pasta dishes possible. That's of the course, one I took. I so I have like a second Italian mother that's been teaching me it, it, Italian recently and uh, I'm loving it. And most of the time we just scroll through photos of lasagnas, different lasagnas. <laughs> now you have a big anniversary. You have a big anniversary coming up. Is it, I what do. is it, is it Friday? Your wedding, yeah, your first Friday. wedding anniversary? Yeah, well, we legally got married in Vegas. So it's our Vegas anniversary and we, we used to be the couple that every few days we would celebrate, right? So it'd be like, we've been dating for a week, we'd have a party or we'd have a big dinner or like it's been a month and we were that nauseating couple. But now I think we've chilled out quite a bit, but the Vegas one, I think I would, we, would, we would have gone back to Vegas. So sure. if you can keep a secret, I would say we, I might try to recreate Vegas in our house, which oh, that's a good know, idea. I have a DJ set up, we could do a nightclub. Um, I'm that's trying to good... think what else, maybe you I could, could try- You could dress like, as Elvis. Now you're talking. And, you know, I could be like that Elvis and um, and just start doing like interviews. So you could call in, I could like <laughs> pretend to be him. <laughs> he actually did like a full press. Uh, like he- Oh, the Elvis that sung at your wedding. Yes. I imagine you could get that Elvis to zoom in on a FaceTime call with you. Th this time I'll make sure he signs an NDA. <laughs> now, how are the other, how are the other brothers doing? How are our Joe oh, bros getting good. on? Are they holding up? You know, Kevin is a school teacher now. Oh, I know. He's got two little ones. Oh my God. Uh, and I think it's payback, you know, because he's been on tour for so long the last year. Right. And I think his wife's like, you know what? You're teaching the kids this time. And he's, uh, he's, he's discovering there's a whole new method of math. I guess there's like- Oh, it's the worst. All over. It's the worst. Nick's doing well. Uh, Nick, you know, he, he can't sit still. So he, he is trying to figure out getting a golf simulator in his house. Um, or he's trying to build one himself. He 
He does readings of plays that he's writing constantly on Zooms. So he doesn't know how to slow down. So he's, he's staying pretty, pre pretty occupied. So hang on, he's writing plays. He's writing plays, TV shows. Like, I think he's, some people take this time to just go, you know what, I'm just gonna relax. Yeah. I'm gonna take full advantage of this. He is going, how many uh, TV shows can I get picked <laughs> up during this break? <laughs> wow. Now, obviously, if we're talking about the band, it, was, it wasn't that long ago that you all came to the Late Late Show for a week, and that was really, we reformed the band, and you, that was the, the jumping off point for it. When you look back at that time, did you have any nerves that, that it might not work? Absolutely. You know, I'm not really great with remembering lyrics, so the carpool karaoke, honestly, I was <laughs> a little nervous. <laughs> uh, and you know what? I saw the rumor like a while back that you know, you didn't drive your own car. You yeah. drove your car that day. Thank you, Just Joe. Saying. Thank Just you. Saying. I appreciate you saying that. That means a great deal. That day, I don't know about the other days, but that day. But it's like uh, I've driven it for 47 of the 52. Yes. <laughs> and of course, respectfully, when you have Justin Bieber in the car and there's probably 3,000 girls following you, you want to make sure that you have somebody safely driving away. Should but I tell anyway, you that, that wasn't said, the reason? Should I tell you the actual reason? The genuine reason why I didn't drive with Justin Bieber. Yeah, I'm curious. I had a I had a problem with my eye, oh. and we were worried that it wasn't safe. And I believe you because I saw I, we we were on your show a few months later. I I remember you telling me that, so I can back you up again. And oh, say, there you go. Even though <laughs> even though that sounds like a big lie, it's <laughs> true. Um, but yes, we had a lot of nerves, and being back in my, with the brothers in general, you know, there was a lot yeah. of heartache when the band broke up so to take that leap of faith and do it again when we were all kind of happy doing yeah. our own thing me with dnc nick doing solo music kevin raising a family and starting new businesses mm. in our mind we never thought okay you know what right now is a good time but you guys were so welcoming and made it feel so special and also were able to help us tell the story not only in a comedic way but also from our hearts and that's what meant the most to us but well that's very kind of you to say in your wildest dreams, did you imagine that it would have gone this well? It really is something that we constantly pinch each other. And that sounds weird, pinching. <laughs> it's a lot that we, you know, pinching ourselves quite a bit. And I think we still to this day kind of look at the last year and think, wow, that happened so fast. And it, it really has only been a little over a year that we announced mm. the comeback on your show. So for us, we're over the moon and uh, we just hope this continues, even, you know, via quarantine that the fact that we're seeing people listen to music and writing and, and looking forward to shows when we can play concerts again, it, mm. it does feel really special. Now, something else which is incredibly special is your brilliant TV show, Cup of Joe. Oh, yeah. It's such a good show. This, this show is on, on Quibi. Tell me about this show. Tell me about it and why you wanted to do it. Of course, the concept is I travel the world for a living playing concerts, but I never really see the places that I'm in, right? Mm. I see the, the, the plane the tour bus or the venue in the hotel. And I, I started to kind of get stir crazy. I was like, I want to see the world and I want to meet locals. I want to try whether if it's my hand in cooking or if it's doing an extreme sport. So every episode is me and usually an entertainer of some sorts um, or athlete. And it started with, okay, let's try to get one or two. And then every episode is packed with people. Yeah. So we, the, our first episode we shot was in Austin, Texas with Matthew McConaughey. So he really set the bar. And so then from then on, we got all these great people to be a part of this. And of course, like I said, every episode, I have a challenge that I'm put through, which can be hit or miss sometimes. It's not always, it doesn't always go very well. Well, tell me about the challenges. Which of the challenges that you do in the show uh, were you most terrified by? The one, the ones that were like, took like physical effort, surprisingly weren't the ones that I was really scared about, but going up on stage and doing stand-up and tina fey encouraged me to do this yeah in new I, york in new york in new york at like a proper stand-up spot where the audience were not actors they were going uh to go see a special surprise they had no idea what they were getting themselves into so these are comedy lovers right they are not going to be nice to me if i'm bad and i got up and did about six seven minutes that uh, i wrote this wrote the jokes with a friend and they helped me but i was so nervous, but luckily it went over, I think, pretty smoothly. Well, I think the whole show is brilliant. I really, really Thank do. You. It's it's one of my favorite things I've seen on Quibi since I, I downloaded.